Hello and welcome back to another Transport Fever 2 video. This one's going to be a little bit different where I'm going to be explaining my top 5 tips and tricks on detailing and bringing your builds up to the next level, while also making it feel realistic and fit into the Transport Fever 2 landscape. So most of these uh, tricks will be things you can do in the vanilla base game, and then at the end we'll go over a few simple mods that can really help uh, bring your builds up to the next level. Now these are going to be all things that I've learned through my time playing Transport Fever 2, and I'm sure there will be things I miss or things that just get glossed over, so by all means if you have anything that helps out with detailing or any tricks that you know, leave it down in the comments and be sure to let me know your thoughts on this video. So the first tip for leveling up your detailing skills is with the paint tool, you can hold shift and that will override any ground materials anywhere on the map. So for instance, this road, if we grab our grass like green and we hold shift, we can completely paint over this road. and. There's some use cases where, specifically with this type of road, you can get maybe a really old, worn out road type of look. I usually don't like to do that. I usually like to keep the road itself pretty clear. So you can come back through with the erase tool and just erase out the grass from the middle there. But that gets rid of that sort of ugly dirt and gravel border that especially these smaller, earlier roads have around them and really helps it make the road look more natural. And what's good about this is you can use it anywhere that there is a ground material. So we can come to this industry, we have just regular dirt selected for our paint tool, hold shift, and you can see that overriding the ground material inside of the industry. Sometimes industries have sort of harsh borders and you can really tell from a distance especially with the way the ground is painted where that border is and doing this allows you to sort of blend and get rid of that border. This also allows you to get rid of those annoying footpath connections that don't really look great especially when there's change in elevation or a different type of surface material. You can just hold shift, paint over those and those are completely gone. Now unfortunately I don't know a way to get rid of the sort of elevation change. You can see if we do the flatten tool or the smooth tool you can still sort of see them but you can blend those a lot better in certain instances. Now I find this tool really shines its best when you're sort of trying to create an edge or if you wanted to have a fully paved over area and have a functional road running through it, you can see that the current road here has that ugly edge and border that really maybe doesn't look right in most cases. So this allows you to completely get rid of that and blend this asphalt all the way to the road. The last really good use for this is if you're trying to place trees on a painted surface Maybe it's a city plaza or something a little more urbanized or you just want to make it look nice. If you plant a few trees, you can see they all sort of have this default area that it paints at the base of the tree. Again, holding shift and going over that gives you a nice clean look for these trees. So whether you're trying to plant them directly on asphalt or if you wanted to line an edge, like this with trees and then come back through and paint that edge back in you can get really nice trees really close to the border of whatever you're trying to make so the next tip to help out with your detailing is remembering to use the assets that you have in here under this assets tab the game gives us a couple of asset options to use and you can use this to really bring to life certain areas. So whether you want to make a park at the corner of a street or maybe at a train station have a little entry parkway, 
uh, sort of next to the building and the station platforms. There's many different cases that you can use to enhance your builds with these assets and we're gonna quickly come up with something for this train station to fill in this area here and maybe even over here if we feel like it. So the first thing we did was fill in this area with asphalt matching what was currently under the building just to give it a nice continuous look. So next we can come around with some of these assets and I think first we'll start off with this fence and usually it probably wouldn't be very open like this so we'll line up this fence to come off the end of the platform right here and then we'll bring it all the way back to this road and we'll see what that looks like. Okay so here's our fencing that comes across. We weren't able to get another one in this area as it would collide with the road and it probably wouldn't look great since for some reason it slopes down here. Moving on from there we can then come in and maybe add a few light posts here and there. So we'll come across the front with probably three of them. And then lastly, to spice it up, we have all of these assets under this table. And we'll just go through quick, place a couple of these down, and then we'll show the end result of what you can do with just these few assets that the game gives you. So here's something that you could do. We made just sort of a little plaza. We have two fountains, a little information kiosk in the middle with some benches and trash cans placed about. And I think this area really looks nice for maybe what you would see. Um, it gives people a nice place to sit and hang while they wait for the train. We could do something similar over here, or maybe we could just place in some trees if we find our trees here. And maybe we'd want a line of apple trees across the back here. We could do something like this. And you could do a really nice and neatly organized uh, set of landscaping in this area. Sort of whatever you could think of or wish to do. But I think this is a great example of using your assets. And that just helps bring this train station to life. Now, people unfortunately won't use it or walk through it, but from a distance you wouldn't really be able to tell anyway. So another way you can use some different assets is particularly at a farm. Let's say you build a road and destroy a bunch of fields that were at that farm, and now it really doesn't look like a farm anymore. What you can do is come to these field decorations, and this will pretty much allow you to plant these pa uh, fields back in where they were. So we'll do a big wheat field like this and we get to select where we want the paths. I don't think we want one on that side. I think maybe just one on this side will work well and we can do that pretty much wherever we want. If we wanted another one here for example we can do that. Let's say we wanted to switch to just a soil field we can rotate that around, place this in. We want a different size. Maybe we want 160 by 160. And we want paths all, over, all around it. You can overlap paths and it still looks just as good. So the next tip that we have is taking a look at this truck station. All these trucks look very similar. Uh, they're all sort of the same color. There's not really any variety in here, and in some instances it can make uh, the industry and the build feel sort of lifeless just seeing the same trucks come in and in, um, all the same color, and especially if you're not willing to use different trucks, in some cases you can. Uh, for instance, let's say we wanted to switch these trucks out, and currently we're using these Studebaker US6 dump trucks. If we wanted a little bit of variety here, we can find a truck that operates very similar to it. So we have these Sour Sea type tipper trucks. This is one way to bring vehicle variety into some of these industries by truck. But once you get sort of 
later in the game when all the trucks start looking very similar, you're going to want a way to distinguish those vehicles. And one way that I find really helpful to just bring a little bit of variety and even a pop of color is to manage the vehicles and you can change the color of the vehicles on that line. Now, typically when I do this, I tend to use one of these more muted and less saturated colors just so it's not super bright and noticeable. So for instance, if we went with this bright pink, these trucks really don't look good and almost don't look like realistic with that paint color. But if we come in here and we pick one of these less saturated colors, uh, maybe let's go with this blue color, it's a little bit better. It's still not great. You can see that works in some instances, but you can come down to these custom colors and if you hold shift and click, you can get the whole range of colors. So usually I tend to go with something sort of in this range of colors. Anything up here is too bright and not realistic, especially for trucks that would be getting dirty. And anything down here is pretty much just black. Maybe we'll try this sort of darker purple color. We'll replace those. And that looks a lot more natural to something you would see. So we can do this to another line here, and we'll use one of these other custom colors that I have. And this is sort of a faded red, uh, almost pinkish color. And you can already sort of see how that brings some variety into here. Now, you'll have to find colors that you like and colors that fit, but this is one really good way to bring uh, a little splash of color through your vehicles. So now the fourth tip that we have for this video is adding context to your industries, stations, or really anything that you build yourself. We have a few examples of it in our main city of Cleveland that we've already done. So such as here, this is adding context to the station as this would be a more urbanized uh, city train station that farm field that we place fields in, that was adding context to the field itself. And then in other areas, you can do that as well, such as this forest. It's only really a forest inside of the industry boundary, but if we just simply come in here, and we'll leave all these checked for now, but if you just bring up the brush size and drag the brush around the industry, all of a sudden it looks like it belongs there. This looks like a forestry camp that was set up in the middle of an already established forest. It doesn't look like these other ones over here where it's just a camp in the middle of an open field. So thinking about that can really help, especially for things like the uh, forest and any of the mining ones. So the iron mine, the coal mine and our quarries normally you wouldn't see these just in the middle of an open flat field usually there's hills or mountains involved so something as simple as coming into our terrain tools and maybe just raising up the land around it a little bit so adding a hill like this around the industry and then coming to our height map texture tool and then we're on a temperate map but choosing the temperate noise and then just giving it a few clicks here and there this will really help to roughen your terrain and make it look a little more natural instead of the super smooth uh, hills that you would get from just using the smooth tool so you can just see here real quick how just giving it a few clicks every now and then sort of roughens it up a little bit and then just to help sort of top it off we can come back through and maybe on these steeper sides we can paint in some rocks. So another good thing about the paint tool is we have this slope threshold and the paint steep side options and this will allow us to paint just sort of the steeper edges of this hill here. You'll have to play around with it till you get the slope threshold that you like 
but we have uh, checked yes for painting the steep side so instead of painting the slopes that are uh, less than this number it'll paint the slopes that are higher than this number so I think if we bring it down to a 0.7 and we just drag our paintbrush through here you can start to see some rock start to appear here we might even go down to 0.5 and this is one way to just help splatter around a bit of variety especially on sort of these hills and mountainous areas so we'll bring this all the way around here, really get this exposed rock showing, and this will really start to bring this quarry to life a little bit by adding some context. So now it looks like it's sort of dug out of a hillside and not just sort of a pit dug in the middle of a field. And this sort of applies the same for iron and the coal mines. Um, just adding sort of a little bit of elevation change around the industry itself could really help uh, bring some context into what the industry actually is. So now the last tip that we have for this video is using mods. So here are just a few mods that I think you could really just get started with and bring up your detailing to sort of the next level there are plenty more mods that you can use and download from the steam workshop but these are sort of almost like the essential ones that i would recommend if you wanted to get started with detailing or just starting to play around with adding a little bit of extra pizzazz to your maps so first we have this collision tile mod this one is really helpful as it sort of helps to protect your builds from the city when it automatically grows as it doesn't really recognize things that you place so it'll just build town uh, build buildings and roads straight through uh, all your nice detail work and it really doesn't care about that but adding this collision tile over any of your builds will essentially stop it and protect your build from getting built over building with collisions this one's really helpful as it allows you to override uh, collision boundaries with truck stations, uh, roads, industries, anything that you think if it would look good to have a road running through an industry. This allows you to build it. I believe it should be functional and this is also very useful when detailing. Next we have these parking decals and car parks mod. These go well together as they add a lot of parking assets that are really helpful, especially since Transport Fever 2 doesn't really have anything in terms of parking, and that sort of makes sense since it's a transportation game, but still having parking lots such as at train stations or maybe industries if you wanted to get into the mindset of workers coming to the industry and needing to park somewhere, uh, these are super helpful for that. Next we just have asset bus with colors, asset car with colors, asset truck with colors. These are what you're going to place sort of in those parking lots or elsewhere if you wanted to have vehicles sitting somewhere and this again helps add to that immersion. Next is this asset mega pack. This pretty much unlocks every asset in the game so anything that's in the game that you can't place down this essentially adds it in and allows you to place it in as an asset so that includes the city buildings all the parts that go into industries all the stations uh, cargo items all of that stuff becomes available to be placed with this mod and this is really helpful when we get into adding context to our build which we'll see later on and then next we have the fences 1.11 mod this one allows you to place down fences so you can pretty much match whatever industry fence you have or if there's a fence in this mod that you like that you think would really help to border or fence off an area that you build uh, that's what this is used for and then lastly we have this warehouse asset this one's not necessarily needed but I highly recommend it as it helps change the flavor and style of buildings uh, depending on what you're building Sometimes the industry buildings can get sort of repetitive and uninteresting, especially if you want to build out an industry a lot. And this warehouse asset 
pack really helps to expand on that and give you more options in terms of what buildings you can place down. So coming back into our game, let's put all of the tips that we talked about in this video together and sort of walk through a few examples of how all of these things can be used together to create a really beautiful and immersive build. So let's start here with this forest that we looked at earlier. And so first, what we're going to want to do is add in a truck station. And thinking about where we want this is somewhat important. And honestly, for an industry sort of like this one that's not really big or doesn't have a lot of sort of urbanized aspects to it, I think we'll just go with two platforms on the right or even one actually and we'll get this placed right next to the industry probably right about here I'd say and then we'll connect up the road unfortunately we can't change this road but there are mods that allow you to change the type of road that comes out of here um, I just didn't think that that was necessarily essential for what we're doing. So then next what we could actually do is hold our shift button and turn this all into dirt. Now because this is in the middle of the forest it would make sense as there probably wouldn't be a super paved or clear station in this area. It'd probably be mostly paved and flat for the most part. And so now that we have our station Next, I highly recommend flattening out the area where you think you're going to build as some of these assets don't necessarily play nice with um, hills and slopes. So if you flatten out everything that you're going to build first and then you come back and terraform later, um, that would probably be best. But next we will clear out these trees just so we can see what we're doing, the area we have. Again, trees are something that I would probably place last after we figure everything out. Now, something that's pretty unique and kind of cool about the forest industry is they have these paths branching off, almost encouraging you to, uh, again, hold shift and bring out dirt paths from here. So we're just going to do that. We're going to bring this dirt path around like so. And then this one will have come over and connect. So we have those two paths there. And then coming into our Assets tab, you can see there's a whole bunch of new things added here from our mods. If we go to this one here, this breaks down all of the industries and their buildings. So we'll just scroll through here until we find Forest. And what you can see here is this now allows us to place all of the assets that you see in this forest area. So we'll just come around quick, add a few of these forest buildings and this is just sort of to help break the boundary of this industry as oftentimes these industries really sort of lose their connection to reality with the boundary that's placed around them so one super helpful thing to help out with that is taking the uh, industry's buildings and just simply placing them just outside of that industry boundary so then you can see the border of this industry is already sort of starting to disappear and you can't really quite tell exactly where the core industry starts and ends and that's exactly what we want while we're detailing. So I think this will do it for our buildings and now that we have our buildings placed I think we sh will come to our truck station and we'll add a couple of these small cargo buildings. And at first, it doesn't really look great, and honestly, I don't like the way that these buildings look. But what we can do is come into our assets, and this mod allows us to resize some of these buildings. And what's really nice about that is we can hide these cargo buildings. So sort of what's really nice about this is if we just change the scale ever so slightly in a way that still looks realistic, we can completely hide those cargo buildings. And this looks 
a lot nicer and a lot more blended into its surroundings. So then the really nice thing that we can also do with this uh, asset mega pack mod is we can place down the individual goods that are here. So because they're picking up logs from this forest area, we can come in and place a couple of logs here. And if we wanted to maybe change how these logs look, so say maybe these are cut slightly longer, we can change that with this scale option. And they have the two sizes here, sort of the, the bulk one and then the individual goods one. So you can pretty much just place these down as you please and as you see fit. And these will help really make it seem like uh, your industry is really busy and full of resources. So now that we've done that, we can pretty much come back in with our trees and cover all this back up. We'll lower our brush size and maybe bring the strength down a little bit. And we'll just paint back in around the area that we just built up. So this will really fill in the area, continue the forest that this industry is uh, sort of cutting down for wood. And it will also help blend the feel of the current industry to the expansion that we built. So here you can see our finished uh, industry. You can really see that you can't tell where the original industry sort of started and ended. Uh, our addition blends right in and this really brings our level of detail and the way our industry looks to the next level. So now we're going to do that same thing over here to show what you can do in sort of a more urbanized area. We're not going to show uh, the whole process this time as there's so much stuff in here that we just don't have time to do that. But we'll quickly redo this park area and come back and show what you can do in a more urban setting. Alright, and here's sort of something that we could do at a station or some other urban area. So we've redone this park. We've really only redid the fence here. So this looks a lot more nice and natural. Over on this end, we have a little parking lot for people driving to the station to use the train. And then on the other side of the road here, we have hotels, stores, shops, other things that people coming in by train would probably want to use. You can see we have sort of larger commercial buildings for the hotels. And then over here it gets a little bit smaller as we get into more of the shops. And then in the back, we just fenced it off and have a few back of house things, just some dumpsters, boxes, and cars. Nothing too crazy, but you can really see how this uh, really brings up this station from what it was when we first placed it down. And then lastly, because this isn't an urban area, we will want to protect it from the city, so we'll place this uh, collision tile right over the entire build, and you shouldn't really have to worry about it after you place it down, but once you get it where you need it, you can lower it into the ground until you can't see it anymore, and then right click to override the collisions, and now this whole build should be protected from uh, the city auto expanding this way. So here's an example of probably the biggest build that I've done so far and this is a cargo hub that we built on the main playthrough that we're doing right now and by bringing in a bunch of different mods and assets you can really build a large complex like this and every part of it feels unique and like it has an identity and I think that's really the beauty about detailing all these things because it could just have been a uh, train station, truck station, and harbor, but by adding all these extra assets and details, we really bring it up to the next level. And so with that, let me know what you think about this video. It is something a little bit different, but I figured it'd be helpful to share how I detail things and sort of my top tips for when I go through thinking about these things. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. 
If you have any suggestions or feedback, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.